So we are in the uh, Deer Lodge National Forest near the Anaconda Pinter Wilderness. We did a five mile hike yesterday. It was beautiful. I'll post a picture montage. But Paul asked me something interesting this morning. We're getting ready to move tomorrow. Um, I had anxiety. I didn't know how to identify it. Just sort of thought, well, we don't have a home to go to. It's my normal sort of anxiety. But he asked me, he said, do you feel isolated? And I went, well, yeah, sometimes. But that was the norm when we were in Canyon City. Well, any friends we made tended to move away because of jobs and um, other reasons, but uh, we didn't hang out in the bars. We didn't have a gin club or a golf club or any of that sort of thing. We tried getting involved in things and somehow one way or the other they didn't work out, but we found ourselves with this sort of subtle emotional sense of being on the fringe. Um, I've almost been homeless a couple of times with a child on my hip, so I always hustled really hard to get a house with a yard close to school and laundry and grocery because I almost always had to walk. And um, so being in our trailer, I mean, Meru is a sweet trailer and we really really appreciate the durability but it's not a house yet every time we think about settling down even hosting for three or four or five months however long it takes or finding a spot where we could stay and maybe find some work or I could do therapy online or um, that doesn't fit either it's almost like we're waiting for something to come by or happen uh, that'll take catch our interest. Um, I mean, it's one thing to be different in society. I'm like 1% on the Myers-Briggs, so is my, one of my daughters. But uh, So you always feel a little bit on the outside anyway, because you see things differently. But it's another thing to put yourself in a trailer and travel the country. Um, though we're seeing some really interesting things, we're not really meeting a lot of people. We've looked at the caravans and most of the time they're either closed or expensive or not in our route or we are going to try and do a caravan, you know, go see some Airstreamers at the Albuquerque Balloon Festival. They're having a caravan, which we missed registering for, so we'll just show up. You can do that. You can bring a badge and just show up, which is nice. And then there's a Lake Caballo gathering, which we miss, miss the registration for. But they have a huge dispersed camping area, and we can go and hang out and enjoy, you know, happy hour with them. Uh, we did catch them. They were a nice bunch of people. But uh, we didn't have much of a community in Canyon. We had a few friends, and that was it. Uh, what they call a community where you feel like you're contributing a lot. But um, it's interesting, the feeling we get. Especially, we were at Columbus, uh, Montana, at a city park, a little Kiwani city park that is badly in need of help. Uh, it has not been taken care of, but it's free. And there's a, a fellow there who greeted us and gave us a little rule sheet and but it was obvious to me that there were a couple of people who were living there, um, maybe with the blessing of the person running the park, because they are, after all, they are the Kiwani. But uh, there was one woman that struck me, living in a little brown car with a tarp over the car so she could leave her door open. And, and she even had a dog, which was surprising. Don't know her story, don't know anything, but uh, not in a canvas spot, parked off to the side in the grass. So we've been there a while. Another trailer that had been full of stuff and stuff surrounding it and grass growing. So it obviously been there a while. It should be that as it may. 
it's not frightening to me to be this way, to be in our airstream and with our limited means, but uh, there is a sense of being a stranger in a strange land. You know, it's, we go to Montana, we don't know the whole region except by maps or pictures. Uh, in Colorado, we knew that place like the back of our hand. We'd been just about everywhere in the state, including 36 14ers. So that very familiar ground. Um, uh, New Mexico and Arizona are more familiar now, or at least a part of it. But the people, you know, you look at the houses and I can't imagine having a house again. Um, the yard and the bells and the all that. It's interesting how, you know, they say when you get older, you shouldn't be isolated because it c contributes to blah, blah, blah. But I don't know a lot of people my age that are hiking or biking or rowing or doing this. It's uh, personally, I don't know a lot of people. I see a lot of people with gray hair, but they usually have grandkids and family around. It's obviously they're camping because it's a thing. They're on an outing. And this is our lifestyle. So, you know, we watch the blogs and we see how the things people run into. But, you know, we're not going to go to Quartzsite. Tens of thousands of people there. Um, most of them not full-timers who are just there to be part of the scene, I guess. I suspect, though, over time there will be more and more people who are nomadic because of economics um more and more so that there's probably more people on the road than statistics give bear out um many people we've met who are in the ranger service were houseless they traveled before they found their job as a host or a ranger or whatever it is they like doing so we got recruited we felt like we got recruited by the Pecos State Park uh, folks and gave us their card, you know, that sort of thing. They wanted us to host there, but, you know, people are looking for people who do this lifestyle, who want to work, but we see how some of the camps are. This one is nice. This is, um, some of them run pretty piss poor. Uh, this one is uh, Phillipsburg Bay on Georgetown Lake, and it is a beautiful lake, um, beautiful campground. There's three here, and they're run by the Forest Service because they said the concessionaire was not doing the job and taking all the money, taking all the money, not giving them, so they fired him, and the Forest Service runs it again, and I don't know why more of that isn't done, but we've seen some concessionaires do a great job, and uh, but they're still taking millions of dollars from the Forest Service. Uh, and they don't have quite the same sense, you know, that the Forest Service does. It's a different attitude towards the environment and stuff. This poor place had a lot of, has had a lot of beetle kill, a lot of lodge poles have fallen down. It looks like a leaning forest in places. Uh, the wilderness was about a, about a quarter mile in. You could see all the deadfall and the lodge poles and the Douglas all falling over and then it turned beautiful. Uh, there was very little deadfall. There was like a just a hundred feet in elevation where it was yeah, it was fascinating. Lots of flowers that we've seen singularly, but these were like tons of fairy slippers and um lilies. The lilies were beautiful. Again I'll show pictures but so the the isolation a little bit of the, um, not loneliness, but a sense of not, for me, not wanting to talk to people. Not really. Uh, because they'll say something. Though I did meet a lovely lady here, just out of the blue, who had uh, binoculars on. And she turned me on to an app called Merlin ID. And it helps ID birds through their call. And it's perfect. It works really good. I was really pleased with it. Um picked up like eight birds in the wilderness. So that was awesome. Um, so occasionally there's these little interactions. She made very clear she's progressive. Um, it was one of those interactions where we could have talked for an hour, but 
she had to go home and eat a ham sandwich. That's a quote. So they're not full-timers. So there is a certain distrust of full-timers. I guess it's the uh, um, certain um, prejudice towards the Roma, the gypsies. That's still there. Uh, people can't comprehend that you don't have a house or that you don't uh, want one, that you gave it all up. Uh, it's hard for them to figure out, um, it seems. Um, a lot of people think it's romantic. It is on one level, but on the other hand, there are these moments where, like today it's raining, so all we can do is pack up for tomorrow. We can't row. We can't really go hike. We did that yesterday. And it's so damp here. We can't really dry anything right now. It's been raining on us for about 11 days, 12 days. Yeah. It was raining in Pueblo, didn't rain in Spearfish, it rained, it didn't rain at Devil's Tower, but we had smoke, and then we went to Bighorn, and it rained the last four days we were there, and then it's been raining here near the near Anaconda, Montana, every day. Today, it's a 90% chance. I mean, I love the rain, the flowers, and the green. You can see behind me how green it is. It's beautiful green. But, um, he went off to fold up the boat we had down by the lake near down georgetown lake uh, we will come back here this is uh, we went up by east fork reservoir and it has a beautiful campground there and we plan to come back but uh it was interesting he asked me that do you feel isolated yeah i feel on the fringe we both do we both do and then we look we doom scroll and look at how messed up the world is and it just makes me want to be more isolated so, and I'm a people person, to be honest. People are my medicine. I like talking to people for the most part, but lately, the more, the less I talk, the less I want to, you know. Yet there's a change over me when I do meet somebody. It's a little spark and I, something else takes over and I'm, I don't know. It's an energy. Always has been. So. I think Paul needs work. I guess I ought to do something. But I'm enjoying running around, doing little or nothing. It takes time to learn to do nothing. How to do little or nothing. Make the bed, wash the dishes, sit down, do breakfast, go for a hike, come back, color, write. It feels like nothing after a lifetime of hustling jobs and handling my lovely girls and getting them so they survive and have a sense of independence so they can survive and a sense of thinking so they can survive and <laughs> yeah at any rate that's all I had to say today watch your head